Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Dylan's DCC channel. In today's episode of Helpful Tips and Tricks, we are going to learn how to use the Loc Programmer software to figure out what CVs to program uh, on your locomotive if you don't happen to have the Loc Programmer hardware. Now this is only useful for changing settings. If you want to change what sound files are available on your decoder, you will need the Loc Programmer hardware. All right, let's dive right into it. So we're gonna pull up this BNSF 9647 file. That happens to be something that I did for one of my customers. And he, even though it's prototypical for BNSF to flash ditch lights, he has asked me to tell him what CVs uh, to set so that he doesn't have to have flashing dish lights. Now, uh, the way ESU does things is a little, little different from maybe what you're used to, but we can go in here to the function outputs tab and we can go to ditch lights. And all we gotta do is turn off this grade crossing feature here and then we go to function mapping. The other way to do it, which I'd prefer not to, is to actually remove grade pro crossing from the logic. Um, it's, in my opinion, better to leave it on the logic and to just turn it off on the function outputs so that they become static outputs. So with that done, we go up to the tools menu and this is valid for any settings change. I want to reiterate that, any settings change. And we can click this show change CVs. Do not, one caveat, do not click the save after making these changes. If you save, then this doesn't know uh, what the change CVs are because it's based on the difference between current status and the last save. So if we hit that, it tells us that we need to program CVs 31, and 32 for the register, which tells um, the programmer, well, the decoder, what CV279, because of the way ESU decoders and I think other major manufacturers, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm certain Soundtracks does it at least. I don't know about like TCS, but I'm 100% certain that Soundtracks also does this. They use registers so that the same CV number can be used multiple times to change different values in memory. So in this case, by setting CV31 to 16 and CV32 to zero, we're telling it to use the first register, register zero. Um, and then look at, within that register, look at CV279 and 287, both of which need to be set. Uh, CV279 to 128 and CV287 to 129. So if you program in this order on your DCC system, it will change these settings. Now, if I go ahead and undo those changes by reloading the file, I'll say no. Now we're gonna get a little bit more complicated. Let's say I want to turn off this, go to function mapping, and add auxiliary six, no, yes, auxiliary six to that, and then also remove all the momentum and the delay starting if drive sound is enabled. Now, if we go up here, show change CVs, you can see that we're working in multiple registers now. So these first three CVs that are changed are part of the basic standard, which means they're not within a registry, or a register rather. But these other two CVs that are being changed are both within registers. Now, here's the problem with this. I changed a bunch of things. I don't know, other than these, because they're part of the standard, I don't know without doing a lookup against 
uh, the ESU documentation for the decoder what these CVs actually do. Um, so it is best if you're going to use this method, in my opinion, it is best if you make one dedicated change like we did the first time. I changed the setting for those ditch lights. Make that change. Get your CV list that you do for that. Go program it. Make sure that those changes actually worked. Then come back, save your file, and make your next change. And, and that way you know exactly what those CVs are changing. And if you encounter a problem, you know where to look. So if I was to encounter any problems with this, I wouldn't know what caused it. I, I have no idea what, which of the settings that I changed caused it. So I hope that helps anyone who is using an ESU decoder and just wants to know what CVs to change to change something. You do have to have the sound file that it was programmed with. It can't just be whatever sound file you download that you think is correct. It has to be the actual file that, that unit was programmed with, which is why when I do an ESU decoder for my customers, I will send them the file named like I have it here, um, the road name of the locomotive and the number. I also usually include the customer's name. Uh, in this case, I didn't because he asked not to be named on video. So that is how you do it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will be happy to help. Otherwise, I will see you on the next one.